Welcome from my second home here in Asuncion, Paraguay. If you're watching this video, you were likely sent to this video by one of my links, or maybe you're just watching this video for the first time, which is fine. And you have said or argued that you are going to stay in your collapsing, high-tax, quasi-socialist, quasi-authoritarian Western country. You're going to stay in the United States or you're gonna stay in Canada, you're gonna stay in Germany, you're gonna stay in the UK, you're gonna stay in Australia, New Zealand, you're gonna stay in your current Western country, God damn it. Great, if you want to stay in your collapsing Western country, I understand that a lot of people, perhaps most people in my audience will probably never fully leave their collapsing Western countries. They should, and you should, but I understand not everyone's going to do that, and so maybe you're just gonna stay and do nothing. Maybe you're gonna stay and set up an international backup plan. But I'm really addressing you if you're not gonna even do anything. You're not gonna set up an international backup plan. You're just gonna stay. And everything will be just fine as long as you reelect Trump or whatever stupid fantasy you've concocted for yourself in your head. In this video, I'm gonna give you these six things, six things that you must do to be safe, if you are choosing, and this is, what you're, this is a choice, not moving out of your country is a choice, because I got the hell out of there several years ago. I live in Dubai now, I pay no taxes, my second home's here in Paraguay, I am much happier, I make much more money, it's an all around better life, I'm very glad I did it. But if you choose to stay in your current collapsing Western country, or God forbid, move from one collapsing Western country to another collapsing Western country, you're gonna move from Canada to the UK, why the fuck would you do that? then fine, you must do all six of these things. If you don't do all six of these things, you are fucked. And I mean that, you're screwed, kiss your ass goodbye, you're gonna go down with the ship. Not today, not tomorrow, not next year. I don't know when the Western world will collapse, no one knows exactly when. I just know it will happen in our lifetimes. And when, not if, when this happens, you're gonna be screwed because you chose to A, stay in your collapsing Western country, and B, not do these six things. Now these six things, these are not, you do some of them. You must do all six of these things. They're, I'm gonna number them, but they are not listed in any particular order. You gotta do all six. Cool, cool. Item number one, top of the list. You must have your own business. You cannot have a job including a remote job. If you have a job, you are reliant on a job in your current collapsing Western country, my God, are you in trouble. The, it is only a matter of time before you lose that job through no fault of your own, and then you're gonna be screwed, you'll not be able to pivot, and you won't be able to pay your bills, and you'll be fucked. We live in an era today where people who have their own businesses, particularly small maneuverable businesses like the Alpha Tubino business model we teach, 90daybizbuilder.com if you want us to show you literally how to build a business like this where you're making money in uh, what 12 weeks or less but people who have their own companies are actually safer safer long term than people with jobs so first time in human history that's been the case or the first time in western history that's been the case historically if you had a job you were safer than having a business today it's the opposite so if you're going to stay in your collapsing western country i hope you have your own business that actually pays your bills I do not mean you have a remote job, that's a job. I do not, you can still lose your job or remote job. You can still get fired whenever you want, downsize, right size, you know, have your pay cut, all that shit can happen when you have a job. If that happens when you have a business, you quickly pivot to do something else and you're fine. I have been through several recessions, three big recessions so far in my business lifetime and I survived all of them because I was able to pivot very quickly and make money doing something else. You can't do that when you have a job. You get fired, you have to take your stupid little resume, <laughs> like Oliver Twist say, please someone give me another job, please. That's not being self-reliant. If you're gonna stay in your current collapsing Western country, you better be very self-reliant. That means you have your own business. Number two, this business must be location independent. If you have a brick and mortar business, or a location dependent service business, or a location dependent real estate business, where you have to be physically located in order for your business to pay your bills, you are fucked. You're not quite as fucked as the employee, but you're still fucked. You're slightly less fucked, but you're still fucked. 
The last thing you want is a business where you are rooted to your collapsing Western country, rooted to your region. So if the business goes down, you'd have nowhere to go. You're kind of screwed. If your country gets worse, if crime rises, hello. If homelessness rises, hello. If taxes go up because they hate you because you make more money, hello. All these things are happening. You are screwed because you can't go anywhere because your business location dependent. You need a location independent like what we teach here at Sovereign CEO. Cool? Cool. Number three, this is one that some of you are gonna like and some of you are gonna hate. Number three, you cannot live in a city. Let me say that again. If you live in or anywhere very close to a city, you are screwed. Cities are going down. Cities are, too much, are turning into homeless nightmares. Crime rates are on the rise all over the Western world. Yes, including the United States. I've done several videos where I've shown you the stats on how horrible the crime is and continues to rise in the cities. You have not only crime and homelessness, civil unrest, particularly in the United States, but also places like Western Europe. Have you seen what's going on in France right now? Civil unrest is going to be a regular increasing thing in the cities. Now, if you live out in the country, are you gonna experience civil unrest? No, no one's out there. It's fine. So now, am I saying you have to live way out in the middle of nowhere? No. When I say you can't live in a city, what I'm talking about is you have to live at least an hour away from a major city. You could be in striking distance. You can be out in the almost rural. So when I lived in the United States, my last house there, I lived in Washougal, Washington. So this was about 45, 50 minutes away from downtown Portland, Oregon. So I was on the edge of super rural. I was in rural, very rural suburbia, but very rural. It's a long drive to get down to Portland, and that's the way I wanted it. So that's the thing is, now if you wanna live in the rural area, even better, great. Get the fuck out of the cities. If you choose to live in the collapsing Western world, you cannot live in a city that is suicidal and stupid beyond belief. I can't believe people who are doing this right now. But Caleb, you live in Dubai. You live in a city, correct. I don't live in the collapsing West. If you live outside the collapsing West, you can live in a city all you want. If you, well, I like living in a city. Great. Move to, <laughs> move to Hong Kong. Move to Singapore. Move to Dubai. Move to, you know, there's all kinds of cities all over the world that are not in the West that are doing just fine. I live in Dubai, the United Arab Emirates, which is a growing country and a booming economy with virtually zero crime. So it's okay for me to live in a city in Dubai and you could live in Dubai, but you want to live in La downtown Los Angeles, downtown, you know, Dallas, Texas, downtown New York, downtown Chicago, you are insane long-term. Now, if you live in a city right now, Work on moving out. I'm not saying you move out tomorrow, but that should be a priority for you if you're going to stay in your collapsing Western country the rest of your life. Get the hell out of the cities. It is just insane for Westerners to think they'll be fine living long term in a collapsing Western city. I just, I don't know what people are thinking. All right. Number four, in your location independent business that you own and control, you must at least have some income from outside of your current country. So let's say you have followed all these other rules. You have your own business. It's location independent. You live out in the rural, you know, out in the bumblefuck wherever, bumblefuck Nebraska in the middle of nowhere. Okay, fine. But what if 100% of your income is from the United States? When the United States, not if, when the United States collapses, what's going to happen to your income? Oops, now you're fucked. So you cannot rely economically 100% long-term on the country in which you live. I teach this, I teach five flags. Location independence, international income. I have talked before about my 40% rule. This is something I'm still working on. I'm not quite there yet, but I'm getting there. What I want, this is just a standard I've set for myself. I'm not saying you do this. It's just an example of number four here. Huh? I'm implementing number four for myself. I want the three collapsing trifecta company, countries, so that'd be United States, Canada, and Europe. So United States, Canada, Europe, I want the United States, Canada, Europe to only represent a grand total of 40% of my overall income. I want 60% of my income long-term to come from countries and or regions outside of United States, Canada, and Europe. So that way, when the Western world collapses, I'll be pissed off, I'll be irritated, I'll lose a hunk of money, but I'll be okay. 
if you have 100% of your income reliant upon the United States, because you live in the United States, or Canada, because you live in Canada, or the UK, because you live in the UK, you're fucked. Not a good idea, okay? That's number four. Number five, you must be debt free. No debt, none. If you have debt going into what we're about to experience, you're gonna be screwed. Even if you think you're not right now, even if you think you can afford it. I will tell you some real life examples. My first wife many years ago, her father had, this is years before I ever met her, had way back in the 1980s, a successful farm, a successful grain silo. He had two or three small airplanes, Cessnas for like, you know, crop dusting and things like that. He had a whole little farming business empire and it was great. One day something happened called the savings and loan crisis. Those of you who grew up in the 80s like I did, you remember what happened. A whole bunch of banks went out of business. Guess what's happening right now in the collapsing USA? A whole bunch of banks going out of business. That ring a bell? Ah, uh, yeah. A whole bunch of banks went out of business and they called in their loans. And what that means is, let's say you have a mortgage on your house. You own a house that's $500,000 and you own a mortgage of half that, $250,000. The bank calls in your mortgage. And what that means is the bank says, you owe us $250,000, pay us $250,000 right now, or we'll come take your house, literally. Now, you don't have $250,000, of course. So you say, well, I can't pay you $250,000, I don't have $250,000. Your bank says, all right, we're gonna come take your fucking house. And you get kicked out of your house. You did nothing wrong. This is through no fault of your own. This happened to lots of people over the past several decades, and this happened in the 1980s to my ex-father-in-law. And so literally, they came, guys with guns took everything he owned. They took his farm, they took his planes, they took his silos, and they reduced him to poverty. He did nothing wrong. His only crime is because he had fucking debt. In the collapsing Western era, where governments are losing more money and becoming more socialist and raising expenses and printing more money, the last thing you wanna do is to have debt because the banks and the government can and will ruin your ass if you continue to live in the <laughs> collapsing Western world. Now, if you have debt and you, have, you owe a, an American bank some money and you live in Thailand and they call on your loan, what are they gonna do? You live in Thailand, but you wanna stay in the collapsing Western world. You wanna stay in the United States, Canada, Western Europe. So guess what you need to do, bro? No debt. Now, by the way, I teach over my Alpha Male 2 content and a little bit of Sovereign CEO. I teach a no debt lifestyle or minimal debt lifestyle anyway. So I think you should do this anyway just to be a free person. But if you're gonna stay in the collapsing Western world, no debt, not even one penny. Now we can get into an argument of what is good debt and bad debt. I've done a video on that already. You can look on this channel outside the scope of this video. You get my point. Number six, you must have government safe and currency safe investments. If 100%, first of all, you have no investments, you have no money in savings, you have no assets, goodbye, good luck, I'm sorry. Now, if you're very young, that's a little different. But if you're, you know, 30, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, you have no assets, I don't know what you've been doing your whole life. But anyway, if you have assets and you have investments, and they're all in the US stock market, and you live in the United States, you are fucked. All these Americans, the only real asset they have is their American house with some debt on it, you're fucked, and a 401k in the stock market, you're fucked. You can't, these are not government safe, these are not currency safe. If you have problems with the currency, you're gonna get screwed on those investments. If you have problems with the government, and you will, you're gonna get screwed. One of the places the government will do bail-ins on are things like IRAs and 401ks, it's the first place they're gonna look. I have, instead I have, government safe and currency safe investments. I have cryptocurrency. I have precious metals. I'm working on getting foreign real estate. These are things that are protected in case my psychotic government, any government anywhere in the world, because I don't store assets where I live in Dubai, I don't have a lot of assets there, I have other countries. These are safe. If you have gold coins, if you live in the United States and you have a bunch of gold in Hong Kong, what are the, what's the United States government gonna do to take that gold? They can't. If you've got a bunch of money in crypto, what are they gonna do to take your crypto? They can't. China's tried to, to kill Bitcoin three times, they failed. So you need government safe and currency safe investments if you choose to stay in the collapsing West. Now again, in my opinion, you should do that no matter where you live, but absolutely you need to do that in the collapsing USA. So now let me paint you the picture of the opposite of the person who's doing the opposite of those six things. This is the ultimate fucked American. 
and again, replace American with European, Western European, Canadian, Australian. Okay, I'll say American because that's my context. Typical American has a job, he is location dependent, he lives in a city or very close to a city, 100% of his income is from his collapsing Western country, he's got all kinds of goddamn debt, and he either has no investments or if he does have investments, it's in the stock market or in government bonds. That person is completely screwed. And if that's you, you need to look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself what the hell you're doing and make some big changes in your life ASAP. So that's the bottom line. Those are the six things that you must do, whether you like it or not, if you're going to continue to stay for the rest of your life in the collapsing Western world. Or you can take my advice and either move the hell out of the collapsing Western world, five flags, which is not as hard as you think, or at a bare minimum, set up an international backup plan where you can be somewhere in 72 hours in case there's a problem. Now you don't have to do a lot of these things. Now you're okay. But if you want to do any of that stuff, those are the six things you got to do. I hope you get them done. Lots of luck to you if you're going to stay in the collapsing United States, cuckoo Canada, suicidal Europe, or authoritarian Australia for the rest of your life.